and we're so, so, so happy to have him with us. So with that said, let's dive into one thing I wanted to kind of do a little bit of a demo of, which is a very new feature in Touch Designer. And I should preface by saying this is an extremely new feature. You know, the bugs are still getting worked out behind the scenes, but I think it is so exciting that it's worth talking about even now because now it has come to the stable branch. And even though it's in the stable branch, you know, still be careful, do your due diligence. You know, if you find bugs, report them. It's still not a perfect feature, but I think it's going to be game changing for how projects are made. And that feature is Engine Comp. Now, if you haven't taken a look at Engine Comp yet, it's very interesting because I know for years, years and years and years, and I myself am one of the people who have, who have cried to the heavens, please multi-thread touch designer more so that, you know, as we're doing these complicated projects, you know, one operator having too much cook time or getting a little too, you know, spicy in the processing department, normally that takes down your whole project. You know, you can start dropping frames from something as simple as that, and nobody ain't got no time for dropping frames these days. Now, Engine Comp kind of really changes the game because essentially what it does is creates an infrastructure where in the past you would have had to make completely separate touch designer projects you know, one maybe to do your audio, one to maybe do some heavy processing in between with data, maybe you're doing a couple of, of calls to a web API, and then maybe you have your third process that's the actual like project and it's doing some generative work. And all these projects, they gotta communicate together, you gotta manage their saves, make sure the folder structure is okay, move it between computers, make sure they're all good, Oops. you know, alt tab between them all, who's drawing the window. It worked, but it was a painful process and with Engine Comp, it brings a whole new way that we can approach this process. So instead of having different applications of Touch Designer running, because that was previously the only way you could have you know, certain operators or parts of your network running on a different CPU thread, now essentially we can make this individual component inside of a project and whatever tox file that we designate to that component is going to be run using the Touch Engine, which is a cool new feature that you know, helps integrate Touch Designer into other applications. You could even think about it similarly as how notch blocks work. And essentially what it does is it runs a new instance of Touch Engine in the background, runs your Tox file in that Touch Engine on a separate CPU thread, and then gives you a little bit of ease of mind of how to communicate between the two and how to manage that process. So I thought it would be nice if I just kind of give you a quick little demonstration of that. So if you've been curious about trying to use it, uh, this might be a little bit of a, you know, a little incentive to get you going here. So I've got a blank Touch Designer project open, and the first thing I'm going to do is make the component that I want to externalize and run in my Engine Comp. Because if we go ahead and make an Engine Comp, you'll see it's not the kind of component you can't go into it. You know, I can hit I as many times as I want, but nothing happens. And really, it's based around this idea of giving it a tox file and having that just run. So I'll go ahead and first and just make a blank container here as if I was going to make you know, some part of my show or some part of my project. And I'll just do something super simple for this example. I'll make a movie file in. I will update the movie to be maybe one of these nature clips. They're always easy to see. I'll plug this into a level and then maybe an HSV adjust because these are two very easy to see, you know, visual effects. So I could, I could contrast and then maybe I can do my HSV offset and colorize it a little bit. So one of the big things you'll want to know with Engine Comp is that there's a built-in infrastructure for communicating with them with chops and tops. So far, DATS, SOPS, you know, any of the other families, they can't communicate directly inside and outside of the Engine Comp unless you build your own infrastructure for that. But thankfully, the, if you make like an in chop or an out top, once the engine cop loads up your tox file, it'll automatically create the ins and outs and do the required inter-process communication for you. So that is super cool. So if, if I have this example and I was going to turn this into an engine comp kind of piece, what I could do is put an out top on the end of it. And then let's go up a level and I'll just right click and save component tox. I'll just overwrite this one I have on the desktop. And then what I, all I have to do, the simplest, simplest method is go to the engine comp, go to the tox file parameter, and load this up. And you see it takes a moment, there's a warning flag, 
you don't have to worry too much. That's essentially just telling you that touch engine is initializing in the background. And then once it's done, the warning goes away. And you can see now I have my out top. You know, I got my little output. So if I put a null here, lo and behold, that's running in the background. So that's that's fantastic. But you know, let's get a little bit deeper into this process because there's a lot of really interesting things that engine comp brings to the table for you. So let's say, for example, I needed to control the stuff inside of here, right? Like I, I want to control the contrast, I want to control the HSV adjust. So there are two ways to do this. And one of them, as I mentioned, was very similar to how we made our out top. You know, we could go in here and make an in chop and just feed in our chop channels however we want. But going into this more modern touch designer era and using the newer paradigms of kind of using a lot of custom parameters, you know, instead of doing that in shop, one of the really cool things is that if we make custom parameters on our container, they'll actually be transferred and loaded up on the engine comps parameters. So let's say, for example, I wanted to create just two really quick custom parameters for the level and for the HSV adjust. I'll right click on my container, hit customize. I'll just give it a page named settings. And we can see here. It did not make it yet, but it will in a second. Let's make our first parameter be contrast. It's going to be a float. That's fine. And then let's go ahead and make HSV. And we'll add that parameter. Now we can see both of our sliders here. I'll just go ahead and just for my own sanity sake, just rearrange these really quick. I know I don't want my contrast to ever be zero. So maybe I'll make the range minimum 0 0.8 and maximum 0 0.3. And I'll go ahead and also clamp min and max at the same values. And the nice thing about that is it means that it makes my slider also operate in that same fashion. And then with HSV, I know very similarly that I want this to be from negative 360 to positive 360. So we can easily change that. So negative 360, positive 360. I'll turn on my clamps. And I can go ahead and close that. So now I have my two parameters here. And usually the easiest way to grab these is just using a parameter chop. Nice thing is by default, because we're inside of the component with the parameters, it automatically targets the parent, which is dot dot, automatically has custom turned on and built in turned off. And this is what I'm talking about, this new modern era of touch designer programming, like really relying on custom parameters as your control mechanisms. You know, the workflows are really getting built out for that. So I'll just go ahead and put a null here and I can go ahead and reference my contrast and my HSV offset. So now if I was to just look at this in my container, I've got the ability to quickly contrast this file and swirl the colors around like it's my birthday. So now here's the really interesting part. And actually, let me open up the chat to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, JP is asking, are there any benefits to using a parameter chop as opposed to using bindings or expressions directly? Uh, yes, because there's a very limited way that you can communicate directly with the inside of an engine comp. So you actually, so I'll talk about this in a moment once I load this, but really the only ways you want to communicate in and out of an engine are either with an in chop or using the custom parameters. Bindings you could use, but I don't think you'll have the ability to have the binding from the engine to what's inside the engine, only from your other network to the engine. Because there is a bit of a hard wall there based on how the, the CPU processes are communicating. And actually one of the limits with custom parameters is from the inside of the, of the engine comp, I can't have any scripts that go up to the parent and change the custom parameter. So that might be a consideration when you're programming is, you know, like you might before, I couldn't put a script inside of here that says, oh, you know, after a certain amount of time, go up to my parent and start editing its own parameters. You know, it's, it's really, there is a kind of a hard wall there. So now that I have this set up, and Phil, I will come back to your question in a moment, my friend. I'll go ahead and save this again, and I'll just overwrite the other version I have here. And then I can use this nice reload button on the engine comp, give it a moment of my time.
So now cool thing you'll see is that it's up and running. Not only that, but I have on my engine comp now a settings page where those custom parameters that I made are now accessible and communicating into the engine itself without me having to set up you know, network protocols or any of that kind of thing. So I think this is probably the direction that most people want to go in is making custom parameters on your containers, loading them into the engine comp, and then controlling those parameters from this top level. Now, there are a couple other interesting parameters on the engine comp, which I'd suggest trying around. Uh, keep alive, you usually want it to be true because what it'll do is if for some reason your touch engine crashes, maybe your, your tox file crashes, uh, the keep alive will take care of basically closing the other one, reopening a new instance, and then getting you back up and running. I'd be very surprised if there's an instance where you didn't want that on. Clock synchronized and independent. I think most people are probably going to go towards an independent clock, but you may very well be synchronized. Uh, these are new features that aren't super explored yet. Power is essentially the same as hitting this power button up here. And then on the tune page, this is a really interesting one, Rate, wait for render. Now, I know probably why this is in there, but I think almost everybody is going to want it off because I'll show you the, the best part and most exciting feature of the engine comp, which is what I was saying before. The fact that if an engine comp starts to become too heavy, it's not actually going to impact your main process. So let's, for example, let's set this up properly. So first, I'm going to drop my project down to 30 FPS because my Ultrabook is barely holding up as it is. So I'm running 30 FPS stable here. Everything looks good. What I'm going to go do inside of my container is add a hog chop. And for those that don't know what a hog chop does, essentially it's a chop that eats up milliseconds. So it's an optimization tool that's really useful. What you can do is really quickly find out how much headroom you have in your project by slowly, slowly incrementing this number because then it'll eat more and more CPU cycles. So you can see by default, it's set to eat just about 10 milliseconds of CPU time. Now, be careful, because if you just start cranking this around, Touch Designer instantly crashes. So take it easy, take it easy. But let's say I turn this up to 0 0.02. So you can see now it's eating up 20 milliseconds. I'll go 0 0.03. Now it's eating 30 milliseconds, and I'm starting to lose some frame rate here. So I'll set it to 0 0.04. It's going to eat 40 milliseconds of time, which will absolutely drop me down from 30 FPS. So you can see I'm hovering around 20 right now. Now, if this was a regular project, you'd be like, ah, oh, man, like, what am I going to do? I got something running. It's taking too many cycles. Oh, I got to split up a new touch designer app. Now, the cool thing about this is what I can do is let's resave this as a new component talks. I'm going to go ahead and turn cooking off. And actually, no, I should make this test even better. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make a chop output just so that we know that this is actually working. We'll be seeing the output of this. So let me resave that now. And I'll go ahead and just turn off the cooking on that component just so that it stops frying my poor Ultrabook. And I'll go ahead and reload this. And what we should see is that our movie will keep playing, although it's probably going to be stuttery. And then we're going to have our chop output here. So let me put a null chop. So here's the interesting thing. We can clearly tell that this touch engine is struggling because of how choppy the video playback is. And we know for a fact that hog chop is still working because we see here it's eaten 40 milliseconds of time. So it is absolutely dropping frames, but the amazing part is that my main project is still holding 30. So I think even that alone, this is gonna be a whole game changer. You know, we'll probably have to go back and, and kind of update our project architecture video because I think it'll, it'll really change how you implement projects, whether it's from you know, putting the UI in the same project, putting the audio in the same project. These are all things that even though they're simple, for safety's sake, you just move them to a different project. So I think with that said, that should give you enough excitement about Engine Comp to even give it a try. Now, do remember though, this is very, very, very new. Even if you go on the wiki and look at the Engine Comp, there's a note that says, uh, you know, this is part of the new Touch API. Even though it's in production builds, uh, it's still something that you just want to be careful of and at least uh, try thoroughly before you get too deep into it.